Module 9. Other Factors of Negotiation Men and women have different communication styles, attitudes, and negotiation strategies. While these differences are not always absolute and may vary depending on the individual, they can impact how men and women approach and engage in negotiations. In this essay, we will discuss some differences between men and women in negotiations. One difference between men and women in negotiations is their communication style. Men are more direct and assertive in their communication, while women often use more collaborative and conciliatory language. Men may focus more on winning the negotiation, while women may focus more on maintaining positive relationships with the other party. Another difference between men and women in negotiations is their attitude toward risk-taking. Men are generally more willing to take risks in negotiations and may be more comfortable with aggressive tactics such as making threats or issuing ultimatums. Conversely, women may be more risk-averse and prefer to avoid confrontation and maintain a positive relationship with the other party. Additionally, men and women may have different strategies when it comes to negotiating. Men may be more likely to engage in competitive bargaining and try to maximize their outcomes. At the same time, women may be more likely to seek compromise and find solutions that benefit both parties. Women may also be more skilled at building relationships and establishing rapport with the other party, which can be crucial in negotiations where maintaining positive relationships is critical. Recognizing that these differences are not absolute and may vary depending on the individual is essential. By understanding and leveraging these differences, negotiators can develop effective strategies tailored to the negotiation's needs and the parties involved. Successful negotiations require strong communication skills, strategic thinking, and building and maintaining positive relationships with the other party. Conflict Management Styles The five conflict management styles are accommodating, collaborating, compromising, avoiding, and competing. These styles are influenced by two personality dimensions, assertiveness and cooperativeness, representing the levels of concern underlying each style. Assertiveness refers to the degree to which an individual is willing to assert their needs, wants, and desires. In conflict management, individuals who score high in assertiveness are more likely to use a competing or collaborating style, which involves standing up for their interests or finding solutions that benefit both parties. Cooperativeness refers to the degree to which an individual is willing to work with others to meet their and the group's needs. In conflict management, individuals who score high in cooperativeness are more likely to use an accommodating or compromising style, which involves putting the needs of others ahead of their own or finding a middle ground that satisfies everyone involved. Perspective-taking ability According to research on perspective-taking ability, Negotiators who can understand the other party's perspective are more likely to form arguments that are convincing to the other party. Perspective-taking involves putting oneself in the other party's shoes and understanding their thoughts, feelings, and motivations. By understanding the other party's perspective, negotiators can identify areas of common ground and find solutions that meet the needs and interests of both parties. This helps build trust and reduce the likelihood of conflicts arising in the negotiation. Furthermore, when negotiators can articulate the other party's perspective and concerns, it demonstrates empathy and a willingness to understand the other party's point of view. This can foster a positive relationship between the parties and lead to more successful and mutually beneficial outcomes. Perspective-taking ability is essential for negotiators, enabling them to form convincing arguments and find solutions that benefit both parties. By taking the time to understand the other party's perspective, negotiators can build rapport, establish trust, and negotiate more effectively. Competitive stress Competitive stress refers to the stress and pressure individuals experience in a competitive situation, such as a negotiation. This stress can be caused by various factors, such as the desire to win, the fear of losing, and the pressure to perform at a high level. Competitive stress can have both positive and negative effects on negotiators. On the one hand, it can increase motivation and drive negotiators to perform at a higher level, leading to better outcomes and more successful negotiations. On the other hand, competitive stress can also lead to negative emotions, such as anxiety and frustration, which can impair performance and lead to poor outcomes. To manage competitive stress in negotiations, 
negotiators need to understand their emotions and how they are affected by the situation. They can also use stress management techniques, such as deep breathing or visualization, to help calm their nerves and reduce anxiety. Additionally, negotiators can focus on developing a positive mindset and emphasizing the potential benefits of the negotiation rather than focusing solely on winning or losing. Negotiators can perform at their best and achieve successful negotiation outcomes by managing competitive stress. Fisher's Approach to Fractionating Conflict William Urey and Roger Fisher proposed three practical approaches to fractionating conflict, direct negotiation, mediation, and arbitration. Direct negotiation involves the parties negotiating directly with one another without a third party. Mediation involves a neutral third party facilitating the communication between the parties to help them reach an agreement. Finally, arbitration involves a third party making a binding decision for the parties. Depending on the situation, these approaches can be used alone or in combination. By using these approaches, parties can work to reduce the intensity of the conflict and move toward a resolution. Identifiable behavior. In negotiations, identifiable refers to a situation where one party's gains or losses can be easily traced to the actions or decisions of the other party. When outcomes are identifiable, negotiators may have a greater incentive to cooperate and achieve mutually beneficial agreements, knowing their actions will directly impact the other party. On the other hand, negotiators may also use identifiable outcomes to gain an advantage or leverage in the negotiation process. Credible and compelling threats. The five linguistic dimensions of power include status, certainty, autonomy, relatedness, and fairness. When making threats in negotiations, using these dimensions can make the threats more credible and compelling. For instance, a negotiator can communicate their high status by using confident language and expressing certainty in their position. They can also convey their autonomy by framing the threat as a choice, making it more difficult for the other party to challenge. Additionally, they can appeal to fairness by highlighting how the proposed threat aligns with widely accepted ethical standards. These linguistic dimensions can help negotiators assert their power and achieve their objectives.